I'm good. <laughs> Amen. I want someone to challenge me. I want to be challenged. I want to be stressed. Thank you, Jesus. Just, just some food for thought. Amen. You know. All of us got stuff. Mama. I am the first in line. I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching to me first. Yes. Jesus entered the temple. He entered the church and began to drive out. Say drive out. drive out. We have to drive out in the house of God and in our lives anything that's not of God. And, and, and some things are going to be hard to drive out. And some things are going to be every day we got to continue to drive and drive. Whether it's fear. I'm not saying it's a particular sin. Maybe you got to drive out fear. Maybe you got to drive out low self-esteem. Maybe you don't really like how you like you maybe you don't even like yourself. Maybe you think lower yourself. You got to drive out doubt. You have to drive out unbelief. You have to drive out fear. Joyce Meyer said years ago, she was afraid. She said, but the Lord told her, you can do it afraid. That's right. uh, That's right. Began to drive out the people buying and selling animals for sacrifice. He, he was so angry, he knocked over the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves. And he stopped everyone from using the temple as a marketplace. The house of God is not, not Pastor Mark's place to do what he wants to do. That's good, Pastor. When you come, you're not coming to hear Pastor Mark. I, you know my agenda. We have to find the agenda of the Holy Spirit. He said, my house yes. shall be yes. called a house of prayer. So whatever God wants to do, if even I, I had one message ready, but he said, well, go back to whatever he wants to do. If, if it comes to anybody else in the audience to work, it doesn't matter who it comes to. It doesn't matter who God speaks to as long as we're open to hear his voice. He knocked over the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves. And he stopped everyone. Sometimes you need to stop. Yes, yes, yes. We're at the six month mark today. We need to stop and really evaluate our lives and look at my life and say, oh my God, what am I doing? Where am I going? I want this, this, and this. But am I am I stopping and quieting myself to say to make sure, you know, because sometimes when you're walking with God, sometimes there's turns. We don't always do the same thing over and over again. Sometimes God says, Okay, you know what? When you get to that third row, make a right. Uh-huh. I'm going to shift you. I'm going to change you. You know, I know you've been doing it this way, but you know, I'm going to make a little turn. And see, that's what happens in church and in religion. Church and religion, they do the same thing 25, 30 years. It's dead. It's dried up. It would have been over the first year you did it, but you drug it out. Say so you drug it out. It was to be a one-time event, and you drug it out for 30 years, and then you made everybody else jump on that dead, dry mess that wasn't producing no fruit for another 29 years. And God just wanted you to do it for one year. That's how we do religion and church. Well, we have our 30th annual uh, prayer breakfast, and the thing is, is dead as a, as a doornail. Two people show up. And the two people is the pastor and the wife. But you got to do it because we've been doing it for 30 years, and Reverend so-and-so did it, and we can't stop it. You better stop because it's dead and dried up. He stopped everyone. Stop. Everybody say stop. Stop. Evaluate. Even when we take communion, it says let a man examine himself. Right. Examine your life. Examine your ministry. Say, Lord, is, is what I'm doing fruitful? Right. Is what I'm doing what you want me to do? Or do I have so much pride and I have so much, I'm so concerned about people's opinions that I won't stop and say, you know what, this is over and this is dried up, so let's do something different. Well, well, well. You know, if your season is over or something, it's fine for it to be over. Because if you don't know what everybody else is going to know, and it's dry and dead as it is, it's producing no fruit. Well, we just say, oh, I'm just going to sit there. I ain't, I ain't going to say nothing. You better say something. And he stopped everyone from using the temple as a marketplace. He says to them, the scripture declares, my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations. I don't care what's on outside of your church, what the name of the church is, your, your, your house, your temple, where people come to me, it needs to be a house of prayer. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. A place where people can come and get healed and not beat up. That's right. A, a place where people can come and be restored and not condemned. Yes. And in a place of judgmentalness, a place where people can come and be healed. You, the house of prayer, that's God's house. That people can come and be healed. And it's not for a race, it's for all nations. That's right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You have turned it into a den of thieves. What have we turned, what have we turned church into? What do people think when they say, oh, I can't go to church? Because, you know, you got to go with a 10-piece suit on. Yeah. Come on. They just got to... 
Come in stockings, hot stockings in the summertime. What have we what have we made church? We've made it man's agenda, which has no power. We made it a religious thing. Yeah, we did. Oh, if you don't if you, if you don't come in a suit, if you don't come with a suit and tie, if you don't come with a hat on your head, you ain't really going to church. You ain't it. You know, it's it's so much mess and garbage. So that's it. Just a little recap. Just got a hand of praise. <laughs> I want to speak this morning, just share this morning for a few minutes on Pentecost Sunday. And for those who don't know, Pentecost Sunday is a Christian holy day that celebrates the coming of the Holy Spirit 40 days after Easter. Originally, Pentecost was a Jewish holiday held 50 days after the Passover. Amen? Amen. And I just want to share this morning about something about that sound. Say the sound. The sound. And I want to challenge you and ask you, what sound are you making? Well, What sound are you making? Let's go to Acts. The second chapter. Hallelujah. Doreen kind of touched on it this morning. Acts 2 and 1 from the New Living Translation. It says, one day, on the day of Pentecost, all believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. Hallelujah. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames of tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gave them this ability. Verse 5 says, At that time there was devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? They exclaimed, These people are all Galileans, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, from people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Serene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts in Ju Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. And we are all here, we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood, they were amazed, they, they stood there amazed and perplexed. How, what can this mean? They asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, they're just drunk. That's all. But the Holy Spirit had came. Verse 2 says, and on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. <laughs> then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them ability. Amen? So it's something about a sound. I was thinking while we were in worship, I was thinking about when someone calls you and you don't look at your caller ID, the way that you're able to know that it's who they are is you, you hear their sound. You you relate to their voice. That's right. That's right. So you're like, oh, hey, Doreen, how you doing? You're like, how you know? Well, I know your voice. You're like, oh, hey, Pastor Faye, how you doing? What's going on? You know her voice. The distinction of a sound, the distinction of a voice. Last night, when we had service, and I brought Matthew up to minister, and he began to do his rap, and he began to do his, uh, what he began to do ministering last night, and he had that sound, say the sound. sound. The sound that he had last night when he ministered, the sound brought in young people from next door. Right, amen. 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 Because amen. that was the language, that was their language. They were able to relate to the sound. Everybody say the sound. sound. Friday night when he ministered also, when we went to Newark and we ministered Friday night, yeah. and he got on the mic and he did his sounds and he did his beats and he did what he did, and they had a speaker outside and that sound went out throughout the city of Newark. And then young people came in and they sat yeah. because they were able to relate to the sound. When I was uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, as I shared last night, and I used to go to the store on Sundays to, to the little uh, candy store and pick up the Sunday paper for my mom and dad, there was a Church of God in Christ, a Pentecostal church on that corner. And when I would walk by, I would hear the sound. Everybody say the sound. Ah. The sound of people praising God, the drums and the organ and the tambourine and the clapping. And I heard that sound. What sound do people hear from your life? What sound are you releasing in the atmosphere? What sound are you releasing when you pray? What sound are you releasing when you minister? What sound are you giving out? What do people hear? Your sound is giving out something. Your vibe. Sound is vibrations 
that travel through the air or another medium and can be heard when they reach a person or animal's ear. What sound are we hearing? You can be in the midst of, 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 of and I think Brother Billy told me one of the kids last night said that, uh, something, what did the kids say last night when they walked by Brother Billy? They said they felt the anointing, they should be in here. Amen. One of the kids said they felt the anointing because we had to have the open door. And so kids know the sound. They know the sound of prayer. They know the sound of, of church music. They know the sound of hymns. They know the sound of spiritual songs. What sound are we giving out? That's good. That's good, Pastor. Amen. What sound does our ministry give out? What sound does our church come out? Does, are we giving a dry sound? Wow. Wow. Are we giving a sound of bondage? Are we giving a sound of fear? Are we giving a sound of excitement? That's why there's times when we just come in here and we just dance and praise God. When we dance and praise God on Friday night, the sound brought the kids and they just started jumping and dancing too. Amen. The sound of excitement. When we were in the world and we went to clubs, we went to clubs where we heard a sound. Wow. Well, <laughs> You're like, oh, let me get it here. It sound good. Bum, 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 bum. Amen. Even put a little hole in the wall. They gave a sound. What sound? It's not. It's not the bigness of your ministry or your church. It's not. It's not how many people come or go. But what is the sound? What is it giving out? What is the vibration? That's right. That's good. It doesn't take a lot of people to get the job done. Jesus only had twelve disciples. He didn't have twelve hundred disciples. He had twelve. But he was able to get the job done. What is the sound you're releasing? What is the sound that's released from your ministry? What's the sound that's released on, on, on a Saturday night when you got a, a yard full of 27 to 30 young people out there? What is the sound when you're teaching on the prophetic? And sound, you got people from all ministries and all churches. Young people, let me tell you something. The young people are hungry in this hour, and we got to feed them. If we don't feed the young people, if we don't take time with them, we're going to lose them to the world. And we have to tweak our ministries and tweak our churches and tweak them where we are savvy and we invite and we welcome the young people. Because if we don't, they're going to stay in the world, they're going to stay in the club, and they're going to stay lost. And the next generation of, this, of, of the church is going to be lost. You think it's jacked up now, it's going to really be jacked up. With no principles, no morals, no standards. That's why the worship is we have to raise them up in the way that they should go. So when they're old, they won't depart. Amen. Amen. This generation now, you have Amen. parents that don't take their children to church like we were taking to church. Y'all not saying nothing. This generation, they, they, they're not, they don't even uh, reprimand their kids when they do stuff wrong. Exactly. Uh -huh. If they try to reprimand them, the kids can call diapers. My mother would have said you can call diapers all you want to. Let diapers take care of you. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. Some synonyms for the word sound is to make a noise, to resonate, to resound, to re reverberate, to go off, to blare, to ring, to chime. Psalms 100 says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Psalm 98 and 4 says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a sound and a noise and rejoice and sing praises. Thank you, Jesus. So what is the sound that we're giving out? Amen. What is the sound that we give out on our jobs? What is the sound? Do people see you with a nice, meek, quiet spirit like Doreen's on her job? And people that are going through come to her for prayer, yeah. come to you for prayer, come to you for prayer. What is the sound? What are you giving off? Amen. That's right. That's so right. That's, That's so good. First right. Corinthians 14. Listen to this. This is really good. Take this in. First Corinthians, the 14th chapter. You can just listen. It says, follow after charity or love. And desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Say prophesy. prophesy. It's God's will that we as spirit-filled believers prophesy. Right. Let me let you know why. Listen to this. It says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Listen to this. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification, to exhortation, and to comfort. When you release a prophetic word to somebody, you're releasing edification, exhortation, and comfort. Amen. Say edification, edification. Exhortation, exhortation, and comfort. Amen. If your word is not released in edification, exhortation, and comfort, you ain't prophesying. Well, well, it should lift you. When you hear a word from the Lord, it should lift your spirit. It should take you out of whatever funk you're in or whatever you're going through. It should lift you out. And a word from God, just a sudden word from God should change your life, will lift your spirit in an instant. Thank you. Say one word from God. One word from God. 
But now I'm putting it to you. I want you to be sensitive because everyone in here has the ability to prophesy. 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 Verse 3 again says, But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. That's why a lot of people, when you when people know a, a, you're in a prophetic house or a prophet's coming down, the place will be packed because people want to hear a word from God. Oh, they want to hear. Listen to this. He that prophesies in an unknown tongue edifies himself, but he that prophesies, you edify the church or you edify people. When you speak in an unknown tongue, if there's no interpreter, you're not, you can't be edified. Verse 5 says, I would that you all spake with tongues, but rather, everybody say, everybody say rather, rather, that you prophesy. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaketh with tongues, except, say except, except. he interpreted that the church may receive edifying. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians 14. 1 through 25. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? Verse 7 says, even and even things without life giving sound, whether harp or pipe or except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harp? So if you know, if you have a lot of instruments up here and everybody's just playing, how you gotta know the distinction from the piano, from the keyboard. From the drum, everything gives a sound. Say a sound. A sound. That's good. That's good. Hallelujah. Verse 7 again. Even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction of the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harp? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, how shall how shall prepare who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise ye except ye utter the tongues by tongue. Words easy to understood, how shall it be known what is spoken, for ye shall speak into the air. There are, it may be so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Everybody has kids, and everybody had babies, and all the mothers had, fathers had babies. If your baby was amongst 50 kids, wherever they were, if your baby began to cry, you knew their voice. Yeah, You'd be like, that's my baby crying! Yeah, You're like, how you know it's 50 kids? I know their sound, you know the sound. Amen. Amen. And you should know the sound of God's voice. He says, my sheep, know my voice. You should never, you should, you should never be at this place. As a season said, you should never be like, I don't know if it's God, I don't know if it's me, or if I don't know if the devil. Some people say, I don't know if, I don't, if I'm hearing God. Let me tell you some quick lesson. If you're hearing God, whatever God tells you, you're going to line up with his word. When the devil speaks, it's going to go against the word. And when your flesh speaks, your flesh is all about me. It's selfish. So if the Lord tells you to release, if the Lord tells you to release some money, say, go bless, go put $10 or $20 in my hand. That's why you like to, you like $20. I need, uh, okay, so God spoke it. God's going to line up because he says, give and it shall be given unto you. It's more blessed to give than to receive. So he's a giver. Say, God is a giver. The devil is a taker. And we are naturally selfish. We don't want to give. I'm just saying naturally. I'm not saying supernaturally. <laughs> naturally, we, we're selfish. That's right. You know, I only got $40. If I get 20 I don't get paid till Friday. We, we want a reason. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So as believers, we should know God's voice. God's voice will always line up with if, if, if God tells you to release something, give something, he's a giver. He said every good and perfect gift comes from him. Amen? Amen. Verse 9, so likewise ye accept ye utter the, to the tongue words easy to understand. How shall it be known what is spoken? Ye shall, for ye shall speak into the air. There are, it may be so many kinds of voices in the world. There's a lot of voices. And none of them is without significance. Verse 11 says, therefore if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of uh, spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Meaning that we should prophesy. It's good to speak in tongues, but you edify people when you come up like Doreen this, did this morning and release what God was saying. That God can move in us suddenly. That he's, yes. he's suddenly amongst us. Yes. You can understand that. If, if we come up here and speak in tongues for 10 minutes, you don't understand that. So he said it's better that you prophesy where people can get the understanding. And all of your getting, you want to get understanding. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. So on this Pentecost Sunday, I just want to encourage you to, to, to what sound are you making? What does your life say? When people hear you, what, what, what are people drawn to? And like I said on Friday night when we were in Newark and we were, we were in, a, uh, we was in the hood, say the hood. <laughs> but they knew the sound. They knew the sound. 
there should be a sound. You shouldn't walk into a church and be like, okay, is this a church or is this a club? Well, museum. Or a museum. Thank you. <laughs> or a mausoleum. There should be a sound that resonates. It doesn't mean it has to be a sound that's always jumpy, jumpy, jumpy. Right. But it should be a sound and an anointing that comes, that resonates from that house of God where you're able to be free. And I just want to encourage you to, what, what, what sound are you making? Amen. Amen. For these young people, we have to have a sound. A sound of joy, a sound of peace, a sound of strength. Amen. Yes. What are they listening to? What are they hearing? Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah.